Call this meeting to order. This is the work session of the Mayor and Council of the City of Bisbee, County of Cochise, State of Arizona, to be held on Tuesday, September 12, 2017, at 5.30 p.m. at the Bisbee Municipal Building, 118 Arizona Street, Bisbee, Arizona. Ms. Coronado, would you please call the roll? Council Member Anna Klein. Council Member Joan Hansen. Here. Council Member Frank Davis. Mayor David M. Smith. Here. Council Member Bill Higgins. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Douglas Dunn. Here. Council Member Gabe Lindstrom is excused. City Staff Robert Smith, Interim City Manager. Ashley Coronado, City Clerk. Carrie Bagley, Finance Director. Britt Hansen, City Attorney. Thank you. We do have a quorum. And um, the first item, and the only item, <clears throat> is discussion of the status of the city, current undertakings, prioritization, and longer-term efforts. Robert E. Smith, Interim City Manager. Mr. Smith, thank you so much. And the floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for being here. Um, I wanted to run across uh, with Council the things that uh, staff has been talking about that we have seen surface in terms of things that we think probably we should be doing. Um, we want to get some input and thoughts from council on moving forward. Uh, one element of what we're trying to do will require us to come to you to contemplate a change within the town's or the city's organizational chart, and that's the customer service initiative. Um, Britt's helping us out with uh, how we pull that together and what we present to you for consideration. <coughs> Uh, so I wanted to give you some background. Uh, so when that does come to your desk, uh, it won't get you cold. Um, I'm going to pull the lights down just a little bit. How's that? Can everybody see? Yes. No. This body can. I can't speak for everyone else. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I wanted to start with um, just a recognition of the symptoms, what it is that we're going through, why we're going through that, uh, and then why we selected the things that we selected to move forward on. Um, I think you guys have seen this chart before. This is uh, what Pat Walker brought to you um, uh, I, I, several months ago. I, I had, <coughs> Um, but basically, it's looking at your general fund, um, and you, you're uh, spending more money than you're bringing in in the general fund. And this year, we have a balanced budget, but we're projecting next year uh, that we will not. And eventually, the fund balance that you have, which is basically your savings account, that's the extra money that you have left over, you chew through that when this red number uh, happens in the general fund. And eventually, that's what everybody's talking about, 2021, 2022, uh, you not having money left in the bank. And I think that um, most of us would agree that we are not covering and spending money on all of the things that we should be spending money on right now. You can kind of look around and tell there are things that we're not doing that we should be doing. Um, and what that means is we don't have enough revenue coming in. Um, and basically, after going through and looking at staff and tasking, um, you can't lose more staff. You, you're already below the critical mass of head, heads that you need to be getting the jobs done. We're already working overtime. We're already working on the weekends. Um, one example that you won't hear people talking about too much, the department heads are taking turns scrubbing the bathrooms. That's where we are right now. <coughs> And until we can uh, begin to organize our funds a little bit better and create a little revenue, we're, everybody's pitching in like that. So basically what Pat was telling you was, uh, after this year, if you do not budget a contingency line at all, so the 100,000 uh, for surprises, you will still chew through your fund balance and you, You've got to change your behavior, is what she's saying. This is a symptom. You know, you're looking at the numbers and you can tell, hmm, we're not operating quite right. We need to change something. So, the survey that I take when I come to a place, 
uh, when I'm new. Uh, there's a lot of investigative work that I do to see how people are performing versus what the norm is or what I consider the norm to be. And I'm seeing these vectors that are headed in the wrong direction. Your, your head count uh, and your leadership has been in decline. And your professional skill sets and training within your organization have been in decline. Um, compensation and benefits have been frozen which is a decline. Uh, asset maintenance and capital improvement have not moved forward. Um, and, and I think in some cases we've forgotten some things. Um, your fund balances, we talked about those in your reserves. Uh, your fin financial sustainability, just in general, every year you should be doing a little better than you did last year. That way you don't have to worry about your long-term sustainability. And, and that's a problem right now. And we can't do anything about state allocated revenues yet, um, but it remains to be seen if the cities and the counties have the ability to push the state to change some of those allocation formulas. But that's not on the table anywhere right now. Our services and programs, our quality of service, we can tell by the way people communicate with us that they're not happy. And that seems to be increasing more uh, than it was four or five years ago. Um, we have seen um, an uptick uh, recently in some local investment that's very positive. In general, over the five-year period, uh, development in local investment has been in decline. Um, relationships and partnering, I think for a long time, the cities and the county weren't really trying to cooperate a whole lot with each other, but I think under new leadership, uh, the cities are beginning to talk with the county about uh, cooperative efforts. That's all looking positive. Um, so what does all that mean? You see these things heading in the wrong direction. What it means is when you're trying to make a decision, if these things aren't headed in the right direction, your degrees of freedom in decision making become limited. You as a council, may not be able to do the things you want to do because things have been headed in the wrong direction and your resources and ability to invest in certain things or take part in certain things may be limited. Um, it also limits the administration's decision making and provision of services to uh, our customers because if our resources are too thin, we can't, uh, it makes it difficult for us to perform. Uh, in light of these things headed in one direction, all of these things are headed in the other. So as your staffing complement is getting a little weaker, the complexity and the demands on them increase every year. And I think Ashley would probably tell you that not a year goes by that things don't get more complicated and more difficult to do within the departments. So does that do, do you guys see this picture too? You know, keeping up with Bisbee is this generally the picture that you have seen? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so if that's the circumstance, we can't keep doing what we're doing now because what we're doing now doesn't fix this. We have to change something. I think today I just wanted to talk about triage and getting started with some things. So. If we can talk about short and long-term objectives, uh, if we can create some short-term relief and breathing room for staff so that we can evaluate and come up with a really solid plan for you, that's a long-term plan. Um, if we can get feedback from the council on what your priorities are, so we make sure that we're serving those when we are doing the work that we're doing to try and create some relief. Um, some of the long-term efforts we may want to start now because they take a while and they need to be chipped away at over <coughs> a period of months, maybe a year. Um, and so through our discussion today, um, directions, making sure there's a communications channel between uh, council and staff and that staff is doing a good job reporting what we're doing to you so you know exactly what's happening within all this change. My understanding is you guys haven't been through a whole lot of change, but it looks like you may need to go through some change and we want to over-communicate. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So I divided up some things just to start the conversation off. Um, short term, improving our services and our processes and gathering better data. That better data is really important to us because it helps us tune our process and our performance. And it can help us make things safer. <coughs> so uh, we were on the phone with uh, C Fix Click, which is you, you take a cell phone and take a picture of a pothole and uh, it delivers that to uh, Public Works and it gets on their schedule and we're able to but at the end of it all, we have data to work with. We can say how many potholes we fixed, where they are in town, what seasons they occurred in, how much manpower it took to, we don't gather that right now. We don't have all that. Um, solvency, creating solvency with sustainable solutions. It does you no good to pursue solvency and sustainability if you're fixing that with one-time things. If it's a one-time shot in the arm, it'll give you a little bit of help that day, but you can't count on it years from now. And you need to build your solvency on sustainable items that you can count on over and over. We need to figure out how to reduce burdens on staff. I didn't get a compendium of all of the leadership, but there's a, a big sheet of paper that's got um, Ashley, Carrie, and Joe on it. And it's kind of a list of the things that they're riding herd over right now. And it's too much. And here we are talking about adding more to their plate. You know, all of the software we want to deploy, um, the processes we want to start. Um, we're going to have to do some of our own triage and some of our own prioritization. And while we're doing that, we don't want to step all over what you guys think are the top priorities in the, the appropriate triage. Um, access to professional skill sets. I didn't say increase the hiring of professional skill sets. I said increase the access to professional skill sets. I think we need more professionality in the leadership, and I, I'm not trying to um, denigrate any of the leaders that we have, but you have, you literally have one man who is a construction contractor trying to do code enforcement, planning and zoning, and building inspection all by himself. And the tools to do that, the processes to do that are not set up. So when Joe reaches out for a map to try and figure out who he's supposed to send letters to, he's working off of uh, printed maps that are five, seven years old. Um, so you can't just allow your employees to struggle like that. They need some professional help. And we may be able to access that by cooperating with the county, cooperating with other cities. Uh, we need to explore um, the needs of other communities around us. Um, identify mechanisms to create some transparency. It is so difficult for us to provide information to the public that the public finds useful. We deal with so much information. If you talk to Ashley and Carrie about the amount of paper that flows through their offices, it's ridiculous. <coughs> to try and make that transparent to the public so that there's some meaning there is very difficult. We need to find a better way um, to provide that. If, if you go to some of our transparency stuff on the web, it's just not set up right now. You know, the numbers in it aren't, they don't make sense. So. We've got to work on that, and that's more time off of our normal everyday tasks. Uh, regular meaningful reporting on performance. Um, I think if we begin to compare how well we are stretching a dollar and how we are tackling things versus the way other communities tackle things, number one, we'll discover where we're efficient and where we're not. And then number two, we'll identify where we need to go ask questions on how to learn how to be better at doing those things. So my hope is those short-term things will yield a little bit of breath uh, for our leadership. Longer term, stable processes and schedules over time that be just become the rote normal. Uh, you, you can expect things to be done on that schedule and they're locked in and everybody knows what they are. Uh, financial sustainability takes years to get, um, but you have to start somewhere. Um, incremental growth in your services and quality. Um, right now there are things that we could be doing that we're not. Um, there are some things that 
might best be uh, facilitated through the nonprofit sector. That discussion needs to be had here in Bisbee. And then a positive impact on citizens' quality of life. Um, are, are there any questions that you guys have about what I've thrown up on the board here? <coughs> are there other objectives that um, council thinks that we might not add to the list? It's not fair. I just asked you the question. You haven't had time to really work on it. Any major concerns that you guys have that we need to tackle in the short term? I think that, um, if I might, uh, under long term, I think that we need to add uh, employee uh, retention. Possibly short-term employee um, training. I think the, uh, the the training provides. There's many reasons for it, but one, it certainly provides a better customer experience. What about uh, the preservation of institutional memory? Mm. I mean, that's a huge, giant concept, and software may help us do some of that. But do you think that's a long-term? Yes. of civic engagement that would be short-term versus long-term, or um, does council have preferences on how we connect with the public and the business sectors? Yeah, I kind of, personally, I, I as you were going through this, I kind of typically lump that into transparency. Mm -hmm. It may not really belong there, but that's, that's where I typically uh, lump it. And uh, we don't have any set um, schedules and so forth to do that. It's up to each one of our uh, counselors and myself to engage the public in forums or to call for meetings or, or whatever. Um, some do, some don't. And um, it probably would be a, a, a far better idea if we had some type of a schedule that the public could um, look at and uh, look forward to. What about channels of communication? I mean, is that something that we should be investigating to see what we can maximize the impact of and get back in front of council? With, with the, 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 between the council and the employees or? I'm thinking with the community. With the community? Mm -hmm. I, I think that there may be customers out there that uh, some read the newspaper, some listen to the radio, some <laughs> it's all word of mouth, some are on YouTube. You know, have we really taken a look at all the ways we communicate with the public and how it might be best our, our money and time might best be spent. Well, I think that's one of the, the single most important things that we hear as mayor and council <coughs> continually is a lack of communications. How do we get the word out about whether it's a meeting or whether it's going to be a closed street or, or any of these things? We have YouTube, we have meetings, we have um, on occasion put things in papers. Um, it's, uh, some of us uh, put them on uh, um, uh, websites, and, and yet we will always get that 
I didn't know about this and I should know. And I think it would, it, uh, we're never gonna fill all those holes, but we can try to figure out the best way to fill as many as we can, I guess. Would it be helpful for um, staff and the council to have some training in communications? I know in, mm -hmm. in other towns I've been in, uh, particularly those that have been through some fairly contentious time frames, um, having someone come into uh, the council and leadership and teach them some of the PIO perspective in, in terms of responding to inquiries um, and dealing with difficult questions and knowing where the line is in, in terms of where you should go verbally and where you shouldn't go verbally with the press, would that be helpful? I think it would be personally uh, it would be helpful, but the most helpful probably to staff. And I'm saying that because politicians typically say what they want to say anyway, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> with or without training. I mean, I've, I've gone through PIO training many, many years ago, and so I understand that. But in, in the political realm, uh, when questions are asked, uh, the answers may be somewhat not, not, not different, but answered different. And maybe that's just me. Right. The best training I've seen so far, um, a lady came in with a video camera, and she had a group of us there, and didn't tell us anything, and just said, I'm going to interview you, <coughs> and turn on the video camera, and you're standing there, and oh my gosh, she just went straight at, it was, it was like sharp, it was awful. I mean, blood and water, everything. And you're just standing there, it's like, uh. And then when you did say something wrong, or you said something a little squirrely, she took that and just crammed it right back down your throat. And then we went through uh, two days of training, and then she did it again. And then we watched the first tape and the second tape, and it just was an amazing sure. improvement. Um, anything short term uh, that you guys can think of that we haven't gone over so far? Well, actually, since you've brought it up, um, I think that in the short term, because of the changes that are being made here having to do with customer service that those people dealing with the customers need to have some type of customer training um mayor why you've uh, brought that up i'd like to chat with you guys just generally about uh, the customer service training initiative that we've talked about the idea of our public when they come into this building wanting help or wanting to take care of an issue or a problem that they have, um, being able to get the easiest, fastest service, and then the communications being there to be able to reconnect with that person and let them know how we're doing at resolving the issue. Um, and then at the very end, calling the person back to let them know, okay, we've done all that we can do. This is the best that we've got. Um, the complaint process could be centered uh, downstairs where the customers come in. Our planning, permits, code enforcement, building inspections, all of that can be in that same area. Um, and we can direct customer inquiries through that same area. So when we create a process of uh, here's, we've received the customer, we've gotten the information that they want, and then customer service delegates that out to the department, whichever department needs to resolve the issue. They're the ones that are going back to the department a week later to say how I, uh, I need to report back. What have you gotten? What's our schedule? How are we responding? Um, I, I think too that there are some processes that we have as a city that are very frustrating to people because of the way we treat them in the, in, in the, in the process of working through their problem. Um, you know how when you go to the doctor's office and they hand you the clipboard with all the forms and you write down your name, your address, your telephone number, and your social security number about 16 times and you're, you're dealing with one doctor, why? We have the same kind of problem here. We collect a lot of data about people. If we know your name or your address, we know everything else about you. It's in our system somewhere. We know your phone number. We know what kind of bills you're paying. We know how you've performed on your bills. 
we just have to look for that. So right now, our systems aren't set up for us to find that really easy, mm -hmm. but they could be. And so one of the things I'd like to see the customer service folks do once they get trained is take a look at how we treat our customers and how our data works. And is it possible for us to tune up how we treat our customers so that we make it easier for them to get the services that they deserve? And the other thing I'd like to look at is a lot of times when somebody comes in for one thing, you know they need several others. You know, if somebody moves to town and they're setting up their sewer bill, you already know if they have kids, they need to know where the school is, they need to know where the doctor is, they need to know where to buy a school. So there, there's stuff that we can have a packet for people that are moving to town. There's other services that when people come in for, um, we can pair them because we know that they're gonna need something else from us. Or we can begin to set their expectations by educating them a little on the process. We get a lot of complaints in VISB that Joe has to deal with um, and people don't have a realistic understanding of what kind of time frame they're looking at to get that resolved. So like code compliance, you know, if the person decides to be non-responsive and he has to go through the whole blown process, you know, that can be nine months. Getting out the other side and getting the court to mandate something and then the city takes action and bills or leads the property. It's a long, and, and people don't have that expectation when they come in and they just want the weeds cut. Um, so, how we treat our customers, what we do with them when they ask for service, I think that's something that we can focus on. If we get this location down here doing it um, and get them good at it, we can then send them out to other departments as emissaries. So if we get the training here um, with the department head's permission, we can send them over to like police and take a look at how they handle their customers, not the ones in hand. Um, and fire and, and all of the other departments. So I think there's a way to, once we get it down, replicate it across the other departments. That way when we're dealing with the public, they have a positive experience. Does that kind of cover, do you guys understand what I'm shooting for over there? Yeah, and I'd like to, if I could follow up on that, uh, Mr. Smith. Um, <clears throat> I don't get to say that very much. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, I real what you just said is is and I realize we were talking about the public but um, the the efficiency of not having to enter that information by every department that you go to will save so much money in staff time that the cost of implementing the software to be able to do that becomes minimal and I, I'm just, I'm not, it sounds like now I'm preaching and I'm not, I'm just throwing that out because um, it, it takes money to make money and this is another example of, this is a twofer, this provides us customer service, but it also provides us efficiency and savings. Mm -hmm. So. I do have just one comment, just after listening where you are so far, it seems like most of, or, I, I, well, I've got like four out of the six short terms could probably be helped by having um, computer programs. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> We're going there. Oh, okay. I'm ahead of myself. All right. <laughs> you're way ahead of all of us. Um, yes, we, we, yes, you're exactly right. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> and, and investment in our software and our technology is, is desperately needed. We're literally working with rocks and sticks right now. And we're working very hard uh, and doing good work with that, but working very hard to do things that <coughs> these days shouldn't take that time. And it, I mean, it, it takes a lot of the burden off of the people. It's, it's a savings and, and all the way down the line. The last perspective on the customer service thing that I wanted to cover with you guys was internal customer service. Because we have people out there right now trying to do their job without any support. Joe is a great example. He doesn't have anybody helping him with any of his admin support. So he's got all these people calling in with complaints. There's no tool built to manage uh, the complaints and the time frames. There's all this correspondence that he's generating for that. There's correspondence he's generating for building inspections, and then a ton of correspondence that he's generating for planning and zoning. Um, the 
board of review, what do you call it here? The design review board. The, yeah, the design <coughs> review board. And there's one other that he sits on. I can't remember right now, but board of adjustments. <laughs> um, so uh, one man trying to do all that and cover the entire town uh, is an impossibility. You're not going to catch it all. Um, so customer service uh, should be an administrative horsepower source. Um, that can handle some of our communications and transfers and questions, but also you peel away a person for special <coughs> projects or you hit a high season on something like uh, weed complaints or something like that, you wind up shuffling your, uh, your horsepower around to meet the need. So we think that it'll help us with our internal demands as well. Anything else you guys can think of that we need to add? I know it wasn't fair to throw all this at you last minute and ask a bunch of questions, but. All right, I'm gonna push on then. Uh-oh. So uh, the objective of this work right now is to create a little relief. Um, and you remember in the um, first uh, presentation that I gave you in this handout, so those three gears, tools, organization, and staff. So tools, software, hardware, processes, equipment, uh, having the right tools for the job, um, those are you know, we've got the RFP for IT. Uh, we're going through that and we're getting that buttoned up and getting it assigned. It won't be long that we'll be able to start delivering on some of the tools. Software is one of them. And you may remember that slide. The payroll and online bill pay with uh, agenda management, um, codes, inspections, and then some mapping stuff for our infrastructure. Are there any questions you guys have about why we're going after those things and how they will help us in the short term create a little bandwidth. Yeah, Jeff. Y'all are quiet. Y'all are so quiet. No, we just agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we will be. At least I do. We will be evaluating this stuff. Um, We'll, we'll go through the software, and the department heads and the staff will, will decide you know, which one seems to fit our needs the best. Um, and we'll be making presentations to you on how this will make a difference for us and, and why it will make our jobs a little bit easier. Um, any questions on the customer service for, focus, why we're doing that, why we're tearing up walls upstairs, what we're going to build down, down here, we're using prison labor. Uh, we're not really doing a lot of construction upstairs. Most of it's demo work. Um, the bulk of the construction will be uh, a counter rather than have a, a window where they shut the thing in your face. It, we're just going to have a big open counter so that you know you can see. And then behind the counter, I'd like to have a, a big blank wall with Bisbee's logo on it rather than. I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but right now you just see everybody's workspace. It's just not. You, you mentioned um, what was going on downstairs, but you haven't mentioned yet what is going to go on upstairs. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, we're working upstairs to convert uh, the space uh, to offices that um, the clerk's office and the finance office can come upstairs. That way, when customers are getting taken care of, there's not constant interruptions happening within the clerk's process and the financial processes. Um, we're not, to, not that we don't want to talk to the public. It's just, um, it's a little informal um, and it's interrupting our work. The other thing is difficult also being split among floors for us to get together in a quick impromptu way and get a quick agreement on something and move on. I'll call downstairs. 
Um, Carrie will be uh, fighting some fire somewhere. She won't be at her desk. I can't catch her. I come downstairs and then I can't physically find her. I go back upstairs. I leave a message down. So being able to sort of stick your head out the door and say, hey, what do you think about so-and-so? Uh, would help us out a lot. And we're going to create a meeting room upstairs uh, that's large enough for us to get all of the departmental leadership together so that we can start meeting together and doing some planning. And I think we can make that space available to council for executive sessions so you have some privacy and a little more room uh, to work in. Most of this, again, is all uh, uh, demolition. Um, the prisoners are here. I think the most expensive thing we bought is sheetrock. Um, we may have to do some plumbing work in the bathrooms. Um, we discovered some issues with the bathrooms that needed to be fixed anyway. Um, so we're addressing those. But upstairs you'll see uh, <coughs> Ashley and Nina and me and who else in your office, Ashley? It's just the two of us. Just the two of you. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Carrie, and, and Carrie's got a handful of people that are coming upstairs. And we're going to take Joe um, out of his office upstairs. It's too small, really, for his maps and uh, plans, looking at sets of plans. We're going to bring him downstairs and give him plenty of room. So if he has a person or two that wants to invest here, they want to look at something <coughs> behind closed doors with him, there's plenty of room to have that discussion and invite other uh, departmental leadership if that's needed. Um, eventually, when we go through the, de the development process, we will, we will have a practice where all the department heads uh, sit down with the developer and give them feedback on their plan. Um, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've seen fire sit in on a technical review meeting and have suggestions for the development of the site and fire suppression that actually saves the person. Because they can shorten runs or place the hydrants in better, better spots. So, We'll start that when the time comes. It's just that's a longer term thing than right now. Uh, but you know, upstairs, uh, we're eliminating some just peti petition walls, partition walls. And down here, we're going to be building the counter. Any questions? We will have it all inspected by Joe. We will have a, a building permit with an inspection so that, well, it's important for, for insurance. All right, so um, some things we're doing are already underway, and you have a list. Um, it's the spreadsheet with the colored squares on it. There it is. That's it right there. It's got green and yellow. Uh, the squares in white, we haven't started. The, um, the squares in yellow are about to start. The ones in green, we've already started talking with each other about. Um, do you guys want to go down the list? There's a summary. This one that's in black and white actually <coughs> has a column on the side that kind of explains what it is that we're doing. If you guys want to take a, a moment and scan through those, is there something that you'd like to know more about? Do you need more light? <laughs> You are providing heating and cooling to these new offices upstairs? Not yet. We're planning on it, and we're creating the space to do the duct work. Uh, the money for the split packs is an issue. Uh, so we're trying to come to grips with where uh, the cash for that would come from. And I think, was it USDA we were looking at, actually? Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. Yeah, we're looking at USDA. So for right now, we're just running the ducts. Well, that certainly is essential. We're talking about <laughs> satisfaction, the support of our our staff. I mean, I've certainly been in your office where it was just unbearable in terms of uh, heat, and of course, equally in terms of cold. So, I, I it concerns me as we're moving people around whether. And uh, I couldn't tell from your you got a two here in terms of your priority and uh, it seemed like that's awful it's quite essential to making all this work it's important <laughs> unfortunately I'm from South Carolina I'm used to the heat 
Um, and uh, Ashley and Carrie and her crews are at a disadvantage because they're operating kind of in a pit with no windows, so I'm already putting them in space with windows, so they're kind of happy, and I'm going to milk that for a while. But really, um, the reason why it's a number two is that we've got to go through some hoops to get the money to be able to buy the equipment. Um, and it's not cheap. This foot packs, I think Andy was talking maybe 30 something grand for all of what we need. Um, and that's too much of a hit in the budget without some revenue or something. I did go through with uh, my, my departments and ask them if we should change any of the ones to twos, and they said no. Um, so they are committed to moving forward on all of this. It's a lot, but they, they are very committed to moving forward. So one of the things that we haven't talked a lot about is me bringing uh, Pat Walker back. Um, I'd like to bring Pat Walker back so that I have a solid understanding of those charts and that we put together a plan, uh, a five-year plan for marching you out of that trending. And um, Mark Reeder, I've talked with him, and he's with Stifle. Um, they're a financing group, and they do bonding. But they also do debt consolidation. And uh, I've asked him if he would come in and take a look at our debt structure. Uh, he won't charge anything, he'll just come in. Um, but there may be some things that we could do for ourselves that would create a little breathing room there. Uh, and free up a little cash flow. Um, so I'll try to work on getting Mark in after I get back from uh, being out of town in the end of September. <coughs> Any questions? It's okay, I'm going to buzz on. Uh, we've, we've been looking at this. Wow, and that's the end. So, no, no, uh, may I make a suggestion? Yes, sir. Um, would you mind letting the council know? I, I know, but I, I would like them to understand why you're discussing what Pat Walker is going to do. Oh, um, well. First, we need to look financially at what her projections were based on. I need to be com comfortable with that. And um, I need to have a, I mean, I've worked with Pat before. She's done rock solid work for me, but I need to understand it fully. Um, I also want to look at the projections on what kind of differentials we're going to have to build into either the revenue side or the expense side to come up with positive trending. And, um, you know, at that point, I'll be back in front of the leadership, the departmental leadership, to talk to them about how to create those things. Um, I also uh, want Carrie um, and Pat and I to sit down in the, in the finance office and look at how we're doing our work. <clears throat> there may be some software, there may be some changes in process that would make things a little bit easier I've, I've talked with Carrie already about uh, procurement documentation, and I just signed about eight inches of paperwork on procurement, so I, I think that that's all coming. Um, but I want to be able to sit in the room here, and when a question comes up about an item, we go through the box and pull it out, and we have um, all of the information there, from the requisition to the purchase order to the competitive bids to the order to the receipt of goods to the, you know, okay. I want to be able to show you guys that, you know, we're, we have all this, we're using it all, this is what it's for, um, and give you the details when you have questions about how we're spending the public's money. Um, there's software uh, that we have that uh, might be used a little more effectively. There's elements of Civics Plus that we're not using. We don't have online bill basically <coughs> yet. We just had the credit card reader at the airport go down, so we need to go figure out what's going on with that. Um, anyway, I, I just want, I want to sit down with Carrie. Uh, she's she's super swamped, uh, and with the audit and all of the prep work that she has to do for the audit, um, 
it's it's not a great time to be studying how we go about doing things, but we need to go ahead and start. Right. So having Pat there, uh, Pat has been in Arizona for a very long time. She's seen how uh, cities <coughs> and counties do things. Um, and I've washed through uh, cities in several different states and I've seen how things are done in other places too. And so we just want to take a look and see if there's any relief we can bring um, in the short term. Right. And a lot of that data that's needed to answer all that, she's already captured. Oh, yes, sir. So that's, yes, sir. that's what's important. It's, it's already been paid for. And I have to tell you, you know, I've been really impressed with Carrie and her crowd. Um, to have picked up um, the leadership of the de department with such an abrupt change and move forward and get the budget done and get you prepped for your audit yeah. and hold things together, she's been doing an incredible job. And the people that she has are solid. They're, they're doing very good work. Um, but they have a ton of work in their face and very little time to think about um, what might what might be a better condition for them. So we want to have that discussion. Good, good. Uh, excuse me, on the customer service end, and, and as well as maybe a time saver, I, I think um, I've seen some instances where the city doesn't have billable documents, electronic documents. Right. Um, right that it can save time internally as well as uh, for, for, for folks. Like the PDFs that you can fill out? Yeah. The fillable PDFs is, is, is one thing for, for various different forms, that kind of thing. Also, I, I don't know internally because <coughs> it's a loop in a lot of the paperwork, but uh, um, I, I think I've seen some things where we're still using hard copies as, as our means of getting documents spread around at the county because we're spread out all over the place. We were kind of forced to, to uh, go to electronic documents and electronic signatures and a lot of things uh, earlier on. Here where most of the folks are in one building, it's probably been a little harder to make that transition, or a little less pressure to make that transition, but still, you're talking when you're talking about the upstairs, downstairs thing, I'm thinking, you know, so easy to be at your computer and Send it to the person downstairs rather than truck it downstairs. So, anyway. There's a little homework we haven't done yet in document management that we need to do before we <coughs> decide which way we're going to go with uh, forms and what kind of format. I mean, I'm assuming PDFs will be where we stay, um, but document management, how we retain things electronically and how we find them again, um, we've got to we've got to include that in that discussion. Um, but yeah, that's exactly where, I mean, I'm sitting there with my phone wanting to take a picture and just zip it to somebody and I, it's the stairs again, which is good for me now, but <laughs> maybe later. Right Questions? Any direction? Well, I think we're in the right direction. I mean, we're move, moving forward. Uh, Quite, quite honestly, when you were brought in, it was to uh, do some of this, this very, the very things that were had before us, and that, the evaluation of where we're at, uh, and uh, how do we uh, move on from there? How do we attempt to become financially <coughs> solvent? Um, and I think that uh, we're getting that, and I appreciate it. Thank you. One of the problems that we have is because everybody is so busy, busy we haven't been able to do something like this. And my, my concern is, are we going to be able to keep going forward without burning people out? Is there anything that we can do in the short run, you know, like with volunteers or something that we can help out the, the different areas so that they can concentrate on doing some of this stuff and we to get ahead. Well, I've had a discussion with Joe and Andy about that, about pulling some people in to help and sharing some of our existing admin overhead, particularly between Public Works and Joe, to try and give Joe some support. <coughs> I've also talked to the county about some of our data problems and they're gonna, I think, provide us with a workstation over there so that we can come use their system and get accurate data to work our stuff off. Um, but the long-term fix to that is something that Ed and I have been talking about um, to make sure that the county assessor's property information and zoning information is available to anyone who wants it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I've had that same conversation with the department is I sat down with Ashley and Carrie and the, the rest of the folks and said it's an awful lot we're chewing off of you are you sure you know how do you and they wanted to stick with the priorities that we had indicated as number one <coughs> which is make sure that we communicate and make sure nobody's going down for the third time <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, I just didn't know if there was any way that we could pull, you know, other people in. If there's, there's. Well, we are doing that to a certain extent, whenever possible. I mean, we're you we're utilizing yeah. volunteers now uh, okay. in different departments for the first time in forever. So. Well, and one of the things that I've been really encouraged about is the department heads' willingness to discuss their challenges with each other. They're now sitting around the table all together talking about what's going on and, and who's trying to do what. Um, and I think as, as time moves forward, I'm hopeful that they will continue to reach out with each other and you'll start seeing some of that resource sharing back with them. Um, and I'm definitely encouraging that with Joe and, and Andy right now. Andy, Andy came up with it. He, he said, well, that can help when we let's pull this together. This this move certainly helps facilitate that. Also, when you when you have uh, finance next to the clerk, next to you, um, uh, next to uh, you know um, down down the uh, hall from Public Works, and, and we're and saving a uh, we have an office for you, Mayor. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was certainly my top priority. <laughs> <laughs> It's in the bathroom, but yeah, there no, is an no, office for no. it. It's a third stall on the right. That's <laughs> no problem. And promised us a very nice bathroom. Yeah. Um, the ladies' bathroom was really, really rough. Oh, we're, yes. We're dealing with all of that. Yes. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, they're doing a lot of good work and, and uh, on, on no money, which is incredible. So, yeah. And then that's the other concern, too, is how do we come up with the money on some of these things, too? that we absolutely have to have, and we need to do it, um, but how do we pay for it? The, and that's been, I have passed that challenge on to the departments, and I have said, look, <coughs> we've laid out these things that we want to do. You guys know the budget better than I do. Y'all need to put your heads together and figure out how we're going to fund what it is that we're trying to do. And so far, that's been working. And when it fails to work, I'll jump in and hopefully save the day with some miraculous idea that some comes some out. grant or, or jump or jump out of the telephone booth. Or you win the That's lottery. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, well, I you have a shirt with a big S on it. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, I, th I think that uh, when you're talking about that, Miss Hansen and, and others are in, in thinking it, um, we've been not only short staff, but we've been in a holding pattern so that other things that could make sense weren't explored. Uh, as an example, when we, we look at police and fire and, and we look at what we've been paying in overtime and we uh, indicated, um, can we actually, can we hire more people uh, and give them the, the, the resources that they need with, uh, uh, pardon me saying well, manpower, but I think we know what I mean. Um, and, and for what we've been paying in overtime, um, it, it, because when it's analyzed, it shows that what we've been paying in overtime, we can put real people in there that gives our guys and, 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 and in some departments, the, the gals, uh, an opportunity to not have to work so hard. And we're increasing our staffing. Uh, but it's on the same dollar. And it's, it's just basically working more efficiently than, or, or, yeah, efficiently than we have. Right. And well, looking at those areas that we can do something. That's right. It's a, willing, it's a willingness to, right. it's, 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 yeah, thinking different than we have been is what it is. You bet. And we are blessed with departmental leaders who are bringing those things forward. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not holding back. You know, they're, they're bringing suggestions forward. Um, like the, the fire department, uh, there's a garage door there that will not work. Mm -hmm. And we are leaving hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment open. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. The guys are killing snakes in the garage. They're, you know, it, none of this makes sense because we didn't fix the garage door. So we're, 
the department heads are coming forward. They're making very pragmatic uh, suggestions. It's working. And that's the other thing that I like about this whole plan is the involvement of, of the department heads. And this isn't just one person. This is this is a team that is coming up with this. And that <clears throat> that makes it a much more solid plan in my eyes. Any other thank you all. Sorry. Any other uh, statements or questions, Council? <clears throat> is there uh, things that uh, <clears throat> um, High school students could help us with. Uh, oh, yes, if we, sir. Uh, if we could uh, partner with the school system to get oh, some yes, some of these kids in here and uh, get a little experience at city government and, and help out with. I haven't talked to Joe about it yet, but there's going to be a ton of scanning that we have to do. All those property files that are hard copy files. Um, you know your your property. Any planning decision or change to your property that's made that we're a party at too. We have a file folder with your map in it. And if something happens to that folder, yep. and it, it's not recorded at the county, man, you can forget, you can forget it. So we're, we're going to need a ton of help when we get document management dealt with uh, so that we can scan stuff like that in. And interns. Yeah. Well, we're using quite a number in public works right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I just, as I'm going through this, I just have, you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand it all. I mean, that's as I, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, first item, of course, is the reception area and the person, and, and, and it's certainly, I don't quite have my mind around who, who actually comes now to the windows downstairs other than someone to pay their utility bills. Uh, and then, of course, I, I do know that certainly when people have uh, complaints or issues in terms of public works. So there, you know, you, you go upstairs and 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 they make a pu uh, work order in terms of, of addressing that. And I guess you were going to train this person downstairs now to do that in their stead. Uh, or, or we'll come down here um, rather than make people march upstairs. We'll, we'll come down here. We'll meet with them right over there in the room if we need privacy. Well, but um, that, that's kind of a kind of a straightforward. Function and someone calls in and says, I, I, you know, the, I got limbs to pick up on the back in the alley, or the dumpster bottom fell out, and, and so forth. And a work order is prepared for that. And of course, it's a matter then of directing phone calls that would now come to the reception person rather than to public works. I mean, these are things that I guess are just simple logistics, but that's what's going through my mind how will that, how will that, how will that work. Well, if, if, I, if I could jump in, um, Mr. Dunn, as, as an example under s some of the software programs that are being proposed, it's that person that would take that complaint and make the entry, which it then goes to public works. Right, that's what and I'm it keeps assuming. the person from running up and down the right, stairs and, you want to and, and, yeah. and so forth. So it's exactly. that public service person that actually is receiving the information, inputting it, and then it's going to where it needs to go. Correct. And it's nice to have the data associated with that, because right now we don't collect that. And it would be nice to be able to come back to you and say, we did 175 potholes last, last year, and here's the areas of concentration. So we're going to shift our paving schedule a little bit and hit this link right here, because it had a majority of problems with it. Um, and you know, there are people that come in for all kinds of things. We, we get people asking for bus passes, information how do i get to or where is so and so um the ladies out front are kind of an encyclopedia of knowledge about this um, and if we can uh, pair that information up with some economic development information and some uh, tourism related information we can be emissaries for other things that are here in bisbee when we're talking to people that are new and we are you're proposing a half-time person is coming from uh, our transit, you call it, yes, program that's going to be a half time reception person. Is that right? I don't, I don't quite, didn't quite understand right. where we're, that funding is coming from. We're going to have a pool of people. It won't be one full time person sitting behind that thing all day, every day. Um, the half time person that you're talking about there, our transit program has a grant funded half time person in it. 
and not all of their part-time is required on transit. And so if they were upfront working with <coughs> the customer service crew and they had time and they weren't working on transit things, they could be working on some customer service things. Um, or farmed out maybe to another department that might need a few hours here and there to take care of an administrative task that um, they can't move forward on because they're too lean on their resources. Um, but I am looking at uh, putting that person down here. And then once the ladies move out and Joe's in there, we'll have room for uh, a manager, a customer service manager, and other part-time or other volunteers to be scheduled through that space. So when we get our act in a pile and we can train volunteers to sit the phone and greet the public and handle some of the software, um, that'll, that'll be when we're hitting our stride. And this is going to be an, a, a, a new position then, I'm, when you said a manager of the... And, and that's what I'm bringing to council. I'm writing all of this up. I'm putting together the organizational chart, the explanation, the position descriptions. I'm working with Britt and Eld on that right now. And as those, uh, the policy perspective of that, as well as the, the, the layout of it, the granular layout of it, it'll all come to you. Um, management thought all the way down through scheduling and, and cost. And then I challenged the departments, um, since it will be affecting almost all of the departments, to cough up a little cash to create that. Because it does require somebody who, who has, is familiar with, with the whole city. I mean, I, volunteers, my concern is that, you know, if they don't, if they don't have that same level of knowledge, if they're just there a couple hours a day, then Scanning is a very appropriate job for them, but certainly responding to an information request is not. I mean, if they're just calling Ashley to say, oh, I got this person down here who needs this, well, then you haven't really saved any time. You find a, right. So those are the things that I, you know, again, I... You know, we don't want it to be a waste of time. And actually, how we manage the volunteers and treat them will be a little different than what you're used to in terms of incorporating volunteers into your local government. We're going to treat them like they're an employee. There's going to be screening, there'll be an onboarding, they get an ID card, they get, I mean, they go through a process to learn the ropes here. It won't be just, here's your chair, pitch in. Um, I've, I've been learning a little bit about how Surprise is incorporating volunteers into their processes. And they have really, I think, the most cutting edge volunteer core in the state right now. And they, they actually have people that are volunteering to help out with police, and there is risk involved in that, and they're, they're doing it. Um, so I'm trying to learn some things from uh, Nicole. And her, so. Anything else, sir? Are we moving through this, or I'm not quite sure what our, what our plans are here? I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have about um, the projects that we've got here. Um, this sheet kind of has some summary notes about what we're pursuing. If you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to go over with you. Did we budget for a full-time HR director, and, and that's what you're, what you're going to be hiring, you're, you're now hiring for, is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, we have uh, opened it up and received uh, um, materials and selected a short group for interviewing, and we're in the middle of communicating back with them now. <coughs> but it will be a full-time HR. I, I thought when, during budget we were we were splitting that position. It was thirty seventy, wasn't it? <clears throat> it was. How's it breaking up? It was thirty percent. Thirty uh, went to uh, <coughs> finance. Thirty percent finance. Yes, sir. Percent yeah. uh, HR. Yeah. Well, I'll have to work with the ladies on that. We have to have a full-time HR person between risk management, managing our benefits, and dealing with the comp and class plan, and getting all of our position descriptions up to date and getting our pay accurate, we have to have a full-time person. We can't operate without one. Um, and I'll have to figure out a way working with the ladies to work around that, sharing resources. Well, certainly we went through and budget. We, we cut $100 here and $200 there and so forth. I mean, and, and that's certainly my biggest question is, is where, what is this going to cost and where is that coming from? And certainly I, I'm also confident in terms of department heads 
have a good grasp of their budget. And, and if they say I can, t you know, I can move a, uh, some dollars from here to here, uh, you know, they're they're on top of things. That's been my experience. But well, I, I'll I still make a question. I'll make a commitment <laughs> to the council that we won't make decisions like that without proving to you that the funding's there. Um, I don't want to step outside and wind up at the end of the year with a problem. Um, we, we will responsibly deal with the resources, but there's no way the organization can continue to function without a full-time HR director. As an example, um, that 30% was to be used for payroll. And uh, if, in fact, uh, payroll software is being used, then that uh, Frees up that that position and that money. Uh, we also specifically, right or wrong, we made a decision not to fund a, a consultant to do a compensation and classification study, uh, and and that certainly I'm, I'm not quite sure where that's. I mean, I guess that's a ten thousand dollar shot. Uh, whether uh, uh, we'll start that in house, and we'll do the position description definition part ourselves, because that's and that'll take us about a year to do that. But I think that my opinion is it can be done in house. That uh, you know we're uh, we've got positions that compare with other communities, whether we go to the league or elsewhere to find what what is the going rate. Uh, and certainly, I've had experience with. You know, getting a consultant in, and, and it creates a situation. We don't have funds <laughs> to bring people up to, to what they're worth. Uh, it just kind of creates. Uh, I mean, I think that was a discussion among council. Was it just creates a, an aggravation <laughs> that that we go through this process, and then there's no way that we can remedy the the inequities of pay here. So, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, well, the the market rate for what's being done it is what it is, but the city's ability to move towards paying that can be done in more than one financial cycle. So you don't have to bite off the entire thing at once. There's ways to phase in your implementation of those rates over time. Um, and I think if we're working on revenues and expenditures and we're becoming more efficient and effective, um, I think that we'll have the daylight we need to move there. Um, the last place I did this in, I think the investment we made each year was about a quarter of a million dollars, and we did that for three years running and got where we needed to be. But we didn't do it all at once. We couldn't afford it. Yeah, I just don't want to create more frustration. <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> Well, I think the biggest frustration right now is people knowing that their wages aren't on market rate and not knowing how far off they are, but feeling that it's a big chunk and nothing being done. So I think if we bring on somebody who can do the position descriptions and then we figure out how to nail down uh, the market rates and come up with a, council's the one who decides how much you're gonna spend each year, not the administration. You guys tell us how you want to march in that direction. But the point is, is it's being done in-house initially, mm -hmm. so it's a really no extra cost right. and at this point. Well, certainly I was pleased at the, the recent uh, uh, barbecue <laughs> that we had from employees. I went around and introduced myself to all the spouses, and I was really pleased that universal feedback was my spouse likes working for the city of Bisbee, and that's certainly the thing we most do. I mean, obviously we're not paying them as fully as we should, but certainly making this a rewarding work experience, you know, really came back to me over and over again, and, uh, and that was very pleasing to hear, so. Good, John. Are you good right now, Doug? Or you have well, to, yeah. I'm. <laughs> I can go on forever, but if I, I'm not quite sure what <laughs> our well, intent is I, here this well, evening. As, so. as, as, okay, as I as I understood, the purpose was that we were getting the overview, mm -hmm. uh, we were getting the data, and then um, uh, asking um, the general questions, and then any specifics 
that we would get together with the city manager okay, to discuss. That was my understanding. And if I come across something with one of you that really needs to be brought to all of you, yeah. I'll bring that back. Um, you know, if, if I'm not able to help uh, get to a point where everybody's feeling comfortable about what we're doing, I'll make sure that comes back to you as a group so you can work through that. Are, are you uh, going to have another round of one-on-ones to with the council to go through some of this or whatever. Okay. okay. I'm not. I'm not. Well, that's I'm why not no, singling I, 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 you I, I, out. It comes back to budget. Is, is yeah. Know, I, we of course went it through it and really worked this budget and uh, went through a lot of effort of cutting, you know, here and there yes, and made some decisions. And again, I need some feedback in terms of what is this going to cost. Uh, I've certainly, uh, uh, and, and, and where's that going to come from, and, and fully understanding what the changes mean to us, and so I'll look forward to that. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion? Bill. I move that we adjourn. My <laughs> second. We have a motion. We have a second. Those in favor of adjournment signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.